name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. In this short video, we'll provide instructions for completing the Pressure Relief System Checklist from Appendix B of IIAR Standard 6. The checklists contained in IIAR 6 Appendix B are derived from a legacy document named IIAR Bulletin 109. For years, the Bulletin 109 checklists, or B109s, served as the gold standard for documenting annual mechanical integrity inspections for ammonia refrigeration equipment. In 2019, IIAR retired Bulletin 109 when the first edition of Standard 6 was published. Standard 6 addresses the minimum requirements for inspection, testing, and maintenance of ammonia refrigeration systems, and includes slightly altered versions of the B109s in Appendix B. The simplest part of completing the pressure relief system checklist is filling out the contact information. Each IIAR6 checklist requires the inspector to indicate the location, owner, and physical address of the system. The contact's name and phone number should be the facility representative responsible for ensuring the inspection is completed. Additionally, the inspector must write his or her own name and the date of the inspection. The ID or tag number belongs in the upper right corner. Pressure relief systems are not always given a unique ID or tag number, so NA is often indicated here. Unlike most other inspection checklists, after completing the contact information section, the pressure relief system checklist jumps right into the inspection questions. The pressure relief system checklist has a total of 23 questions that should be answered yes, no, or not applicable. Wording of each question is such that a yes answer is always positive and a no answer indicates a deficiency. Some questions may not be applicable and should be answered NA. Item A asks if all pressure relief valves and rupture discs have legible nameplates. Nameplates can be found on the body of the pressure relief valve and will contain information such as the manufacturer, model, set pressure, and certified capacity. Most importantly, the nameplate must have an ASME stamp and national board stamp. Item B asks if all the components in the relief system are suitable for ammonia. Suitability for ammonia can be verified by the equipment specifications provided by the manufacturer. Pressure relief valves supplied by reputable manufacturers will satisfy this requirement. Item C requires the inspector to verify that supports and anchorage are adequate. While relief valves are not typically anchored, this question provides an opportunity for the inspector to assess the piping associated with relief valve discharge piping to make sure that it is adequately supported. The pressure relief valves should have safe access for normal service and maintenance. Ideally, permanent ladders, catwalks, or other means to access the system's relief valves will be available. When permanent access is not provided, facilities must utilize extension ladders or aerial lifts to access the high or hard to reach places. For difficult to access relief valves, a camera with a high quality zoom lens can save a lot of time associated with moving ladders around. Item E asks if there is adequate protection against traffic hazards. Pressure relief valves can be located throughout the facility, and it's imperative these valves are adequately protected from potential impacts from forklifts, aerial lifts, or service trucks. Machinery rooms often protect many of the pressure relief valves from this contact. Item F inquires if the relief valve discharge termination pipes are marked as required by IIAR Standard 2. Standard 2 requires piping mains, headers, and branches to be labeled. In the case of pressure relief piping, the pipe color should be gray. The physical state abbreviation should state VAP, which is an abbreviation for vapor. The relative pressure will be listed as high, and the service abbreviation should say RV, which stands for relief vent. Item G asks if the relief valves are in good condition. Inspectors should look for corrosion, excessive dirt buildup, or cobwebs to ensure the system is being properly maintained. If the relief system has instrumentation to detect when a relief valve lifts, such as a rupture disc, pop eye valve, or tattle, ensure the device is not indicating that the relief valve has lifted. Item H asks if pressure relief valve set pressure matches the maximum allowable working pressure, or MAWP, of the equipment that it protects. The relief valve must have a set pressure equal to or less than the equipment MAWP. 
Item I inquires if all the pressure relief valves have required discharge capacities. Explaining the rationale for assessing the required discharge capacity is outside the scope of this video, but at minimum, the inspector should verify that the relief system calculations are available and consistent with the relief system installation. Item J asks if all the relief valve seals are intact. The relief valves are sealed by the manufacturer. A broken seal is an indication that the relief valve has been tampered with, which would require valve replacement. Item K inquires if the proper relief valve assembly is installed per IIAR Standard 2. Standard 2 requires that pressure vessels with an internal volume greater than 10 cubic feet be configured with a dual relief valve assembly, consisting of a three-way relief isolation valve connected to two relief valves. In this arrangement, only one relief valve is active at any time, which allows the other relief valve to be replaced while the equipment is still under pressure. Vessels with an internal volume less than 10 cubic feet can have a single relief valve. Relief valves that discharge to the atmosphere must be connected above the liquid level of the equipment they are protecting. Item L asks if this is true for the relief system being inspected. Item M inquires if all inlet piping to the pressure relief valves conforms to the addition of IIAR Standard 2 that was effective when the relief system was installed. Again, it is beyond the scope of this video to provide a full explanation of the inlet piping requirements, but the inspector must verify that relief system calculations are available and that egregious deficiencies, such as an expansion into the relief valve inlet connection, are not present. Similarly, item N inquires if the relief valve discharge termination piping conforms to the addition of IIAR Standard 2 applicable when the relief system was installed. The equation for assessing discharge piping for excessive back pressure can be a bit intimidating, but at minimum, the inspector must verify that there are no reducers in the termination piping. Item O asks if the extremity of the relief valve termination pipe to the atmosphere is fitted with an approved ammonia diffuser and or rain cover. If a relief system terminates to the atmosphere, the termination point may be susceptible to rain or snow. Therefore, means to prevent rain or snow from entering the pipe is required. IIAR Standard 2 states that permissible covers include double 45 degree diffuser, a bull's horn diffuser, a self-closing flapper cap, or a sock hood cover, or exterior stack extension diffuser. This relief system terminates into an ammonia diffusion tank, so the question is not applicable. Relief valves should be located outside of the refrigerated space. Item P asks if this is true for the relief system being inspected. If the answer is no, the inspector must indicate what measures are being taken to prevent moisture in the air from condensing and migrating into the relief valve spring. Item Q asks if all pressure relief valves have been replaced or tested, repaired, and sealed by an ASME certified agent within the last five years of service. For ammonia refrigeration systems, the most common practice is to replace relief valves every five years. The easiest way to check if a pressure relief valve was installed within the last five years is by examining the date tag attached to the valve. Pressure relief valve tags are punched on their install date and indicate when a pressure relief valve is due for its next replacement. It is recommended to have another means of keeping record of the pressure relief valve installation dates in the event that a date tag were to become detached. Item R inquires if the inlet to each relief valve is free of stop valves, which, if closed, would render the valve ineffective. Three-way relief isolation valves are acceptable since they do not allow both relief valves to be simultaneously isolated. Item S is related to the inlet piping question in item M and asks if the area of the opening that connects the relief valve to the equipment it protects is not less than the area of the pressure relief device itself. In other words, the inlet pipe must not expand into the relief valve. 
Item T asks if stop valves in relief valve discharge piping are locked open or car sealed open with appropriate administrative controls. This oil cooler relief valve terminates back into the system and has an outlet isolation valve that is locked open as required. Item U is used to assess the relief valve discharge termination location. IIAR Standard 2 states that discharge termination from piping relieving to atmosphere shall not be less than 7.25 feet above a roof or within 20 feet horizontal distance of an adjacent building roof line. These relief valves are not terminated at an adequate height. When the relief valves terminate into an ammonia diffusion tank, the question should be marked NA. The checklist concludes with items V and W. Item V asks if the pressure relief valves are free of pitting and surface damage. Item W serves as a catch-all for other concerns that the inspector may have observed. The area below can be used to write a description of the deficiencies. This concludes the Pressure Relief System IIAR6 Appendix B Checklist. I trust you found this information useful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.